What's up, Brand Man Network? We got another exclusive, and this video right here is simply to focus on not only how do I feel about playlisters, because people ask me a lot about that, but even bigger, a checklist that you should go through to make sure that you're reaching out and dealing with a real quality playlist. So first and foremost, how do I feel about playlisters? I feel like if they're good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. Simple. So it's obviously a useful tool that you can get on a great playlist, but the bigger trouble is obviously not only finding them, but knowing if they are valid. Here's my six reasons on any checklist form that you should go through to decide if this is a quality individual you're dealing with or a scam. Number one, do a small test. Now this is kind of tricky, right? Because you're thinking that if I could do a small test and they, you know, they're willing to do a little test and I see a few results, then this person is quality, right? This is a good person. They allow me to do a test. That's where some of the trick starts, in my opinion, because what you're going to find is a lot of people, particularly if they're quality and they know what they're doing, they're not going to give you a small test. How do you just give somebody a small test? If I have a playlist, can I really control the people that come in and listen? Yeah, I could put you on a playlist, but I can't guarantee that, oh, you'll get like 15 views or 20 views or 20,000 views. If I had a quality playlist, I'm not really giving out small tests like that. A lot of these people who are giving you and allowing you to get a small test are actually people who have the ability to push a button and these fake followers come in or these fake listens come in and now it looks good, but the money that you spend is gonna be bad. So if someone allows you to do a small test, I would kind of question the integrity of the actual playlist or whatever system they have working out. Number two, see if the songs on the playlist actually make sense. Not only make sense for you, that should be obvious, right? If the songs on the playlist have nothing to do with the type of music you make, then why are you trying to be on that playlist? But even see if those songs on that playlist make sense being together, because this will give you a little insight. Of course, some people might have these big songs on playlists to just make sure you know people keep listening and things like that that are already successful, but then they pepper in these songs from people that paid to be on the playlist. Cool, that's all good, but first of all, are these songs that they are allowed to be on the playlist, do they make sense together? Because if they don't, that means the people either have bad judgment, which means it's gonna lead to a bad following on the playlist. Why would people listen to a playlist where the mood doesn't make sense to keep switching between random songs? And on top of that, it could just be another sign that people are taking whatever money they can get until they have to move on to another playlist. So it's probably bad. Number three, do you think the songs on the playlist are quality in the first place? Because once again, if the songs aren't quality on the playlist, well, then the followers, the consumers probably think the same thing. So they probably are not listening to this playlist. The only reason it probably exists is for a scam or just a, a service badly done. Some people don't even know they're scamming. They just suck at the service. And it's that simple. So take your time, listen to some of these songs on this playlist, particularly the ones that aren't big and are paid for, and make a judgment. It's the same idea that when people try to get on these blogs and they're like, yo, brand man, should I get on this blog? Well, hmm, do you care about that blog? Do you listen to that blog? Do you Have you ever heard of this blog before you even tried to get on it? If it's not a blog that you care about and think it's you know, quality in any form or fashion, then why would you try to get on it? It's the same for the playlist. Number four, look at other songs on a playlist and try to find the actual artist. See about those artists' experience. What do they think? Did they get scammed when they were on there? Do they, they might not respond, whatever. Um, but if they do respond, yeah, figure it out. Did you get scammed? Did you enjoy your experience? Was it just okay? That'll give you a gauge on what your expectations should be because hey, Maybe you don't care if it's not quality followers. If it's not quality followers or quality listens, your goal might just be to get the numbers up for a period of time so it can look good just for vanity. There's a lot of people who are doing that, but at least you're managing your expectations because if you hit 1,000 listens and never get an another listen, if you just wanted to say 1,000 listens, I mean, you hit your expectations, but if you're expecting real people, then now you feel like you got scammed. So make sure you ask around if you can and can find somebody. Number five, how cheap is this playlist and what are they promising? Are they promising you these guaranteed views and things like that? I have 
I have a lot of question when it comes to guaranteeing a certain number because I know if I had a playlist, I would not guarantee a certain number. I would say, hey, right now, a lot of songs on the playlist have around these plays, but I wouldn't say you're going to get 5,000 views or you're going to get 6,000 listens, whatever it is, you're going to get 200 followers. I wouldn't do that if I had a playlist. The reason being is you can never guarantee something like that unless you are dumping a system where you're pushing a button and these fake things come in and once you hit that measurement, you can move on and say, hey, you did the job. These are not Facebook ads. When you do paid ads, that works completely well because you can literally keep running an ad till you hit that number. If you're putting it on a playlist, it's kind of like putting it on an Instagram post. Yeah, sometimes you get 10 views, sometimes you get 500 views, sometimes you get 1,000 views. All they can do is post it on their platform and then hope people like it. And I kind of mixed that one in, right? So let's just say number five is about guaranteed plays. What are their guarantees? If they're guaranteeing something, it gets kind of fishy as well. That should be a bell to kind of ring off and say, eh, I don't know about this one, but we'll say number six. Is it too cheap? Because if it's super cheap, then it probably isn't worth it. Anybody with a quality playlist, a for real quality playlist is gonna get you a lot of views. They're charging what they're worth. Why would they not charge what they, they're worth? So think about it that way. Keep it straight simple. However, you need to make sure you keep these other things in mind because just because something is expensive doesn't mean that it's quality either. That just means you might lose more money. So also use the rest of the things on this playlist, I mean on this checklist, and I'll throw in a bonus number seven is if you actually use one of these things, right? The next step is just saying, what are the results after the campaign, right? Point blank. One day I was doing the test. This is probably about two years ago now. I used the website that I just came across and I was testing literally so I could find some services to recommend on the brand man YouTube channel. But the services all that I used and found that I was testing they had this one thing in common. You'll see a huge bump in views and listens in a short period of time on the Spotify playlist. And then once the campaign stopped, it literally just dropped off. That's something you guys should keep in mind because yeah, you might get a good result and it might seem good at first, but don't ever judge the results of your campaign until one week, two weeks, three weeks afterwards. Because if you got 500,000 listens, and then next thing you know, after that week, you're back to zero or you're down to nine. Either your song is trash or whatever that playlister is doing is trash. So those are actually seven things in checklist form to keep in mind when it comes to playlister. Those are my thoughts. And I'm thinking about creating a actual checklist so you can look at this before you actually work with a playlister. Other than that, I just, I actually don't have a sign off for Brand Man Network yet. So I would love if you guys have any suggestions, you know, put it, in the bottom of this video or in the discord somewhere i'm working on it but let's get it